Hello, folks. Welcome to the show. Check Chow on East West with GNE TV. At GNE TV, we pay attention to everything around us. Speaking of everything around us, there is nothing that is more important than the election. Or right, election is the core value of American freedom, American democracy. Without doing that, you're not, well. You're simply not talking about the United States. You're talking elsewhere. Might be, I don't care, right? Anyway, so today we're talking about our state election. Namely, we're talking about the position of lieutenant governor. So with me, oh, by the way, the second half of the year starts with a with a, with a huge difference. As as of yesterday, July first, we're talking about a environmental issue, and today we're talking about a politically environment issue. We're looking at a quite a change of our political environment with the election coming on. So today, joining me is the candidate, is the number one candidate of our lieutenant governor position of beautiful California. His name is Mr. Ron Nearing. <laughs> Welcome to my show. Thank sir. you. Happy to be here. I would have to serve you because you're. Let me advance your position now. I'm talking to Lieutenant Governor, not somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> good, right, good. Uh, with the advancement, uh, I would like to invite our future Lieutenant Governor of beautiful California to give us a little up-to-date about the election, please. Well, it starts with uh, the fact that um, uh, that uh, we had our June 3rd primary, and mm -hmm. uh, under our new system in California, our top two candidates go on to the November general election. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I filed for lieutenant governor back in the beginning part of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, prior to that, I had been chairman of the California Republican Party for four mm -hmm. years, from mm -hmm. 2007 to 2011. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know uh, that. My interest in politics really starts with why my parents came to America in the first place. Mm. Uh, my parents were immigrants from Germany. They came mm. here in 1961. I see. Uh, my uh, father and mother were both born in Nazi Germany. My mm. father was born in 1934, my mother in 1941. All right. And they were uh, from a very poor town in the northern part of Germany, and my father found a way to get out of that town by joining the German merchant marines as a sailor. I see. And so he traveled around the world for seven years, mm -hmm. and when he was finished, he left the merchant marines, went back to Germany, met my mother, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then he, they decided that of all the places my father had seen, he wanted to raise his new family in freedom in uh -huh. the United States. Yeah, yeah, all right. So in 1961... They made a good choice. They made a great choice. <laughs> I'm very happy choice. about that. Yeah, sure. Uh, so they boarded the ship in 1961. They sailed across the Atlantic. They didn't mm -hmm. speak any English when mm -hmm. they came here. My parents learned English by watching cartoons on television. Mm -hmm. uh, my father had no more than a 10th grade education, same with my mother. I see. And, uh, and they they began the process of becoming American citizens, mm -hmm. and they became citizens in 1967, and I was born in 1970. Mm -hmm. And my father always believed that uh, that the Republican Party best reflected the ideas that brought him to America in the first place, mm -hmm. and that's freedom and opportunity, All right. okay. uh, which he did, which he saw as lacking back in, in Germany that he had left behind. Mm -hmm. So that's that's where my interest in politics came from, and so I've been involved mm -hmm. in one way or another for. 25 years, mm -hmm. and earlier this year I decided to run for lieutenant governor, and mm -hmm. uh, and we won the primary, and now we're advancing to the November general election. All right. um, it's a tough environment, of course, but every election is an opportunity for voters to decide I whether see. we're on the right track mm -hmm. or whether we can do better. Nothing that we can do better sure, than how sure, we're doing sure, today. Sure. All right, all right. Uh, you know, sir, it is always good to to know each other starting like this way, like what we did, because we know from bottom up, right? Mm -hmm. And to, to me, if I had to say something, oh, by the way, whatever I say here is my personal point of view. It doesn't well, represent this show, nor does it do with the organization. I mean, what I, if I had a choice between choosing somebody who is brought up from uh, ground up, ground zero to the top, to right now. And the other option is somebody born with a silver spoon in the mouth. I would do the former. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it is all experience you're talking about. If you come from a almost nothing family, you know what it feels almost nothing is, right? 
And then if you were born with a silver spoon in the mouth, you do not know anything below you. So for somebody with a, that kind of background, especially you're talking about a country whose value, whose bottom value is the immigration, and who's formed up with uh, all colors of people, and immigration is the foundation of this country, especially California, you really want to choose somebody like that with understandings, right? Okay, now, at the time of election, it is all, we're all, people are all talking about who you are, where you're from, what have you done, right? And then what will you do, mm -hmm. right? That kind of thing, right? So, so easy, one, two, three, four, four chunks. Mm -hmm. right. And the second chunk is that, what have you done so far, please? Well, I was the leader of the Republican Party in mm -hmm. San Diego. From, mm -hmm. That's uh, quite a position. It, it is. Uh, yeah, one of the largest counties in America. Mm -hmm. And I took over an organization that was um, in uh, financial trouble. Uh -huh. It was uh, an organization that was in debt. It was not a winning mm -hmm. organization. It was not seen as one which people wanted to be an active part of. Mm -hmm. And we turned that around. And we were very successful. And I based on, uh, on that track record of success as leading the Republican Party in San Diego, mm -hmm. I moved on and was elected twice to be the chairman of the Republican Party for the state of California. Oh, I see. And, uh, and in that uh, position, I started with an organization that was millions of dollars in debt. On the day I became chairman, the mm. California Republican Party was almost $5 million in uh, debt. Uh. And uh, we turned that around, and by the time I left as party chairman, we had no debt. We were in a strong financial position. We had a great staff. Oh. Uh, and, uh, and so we You're turned that... You're the man that, of difference. Well, we, we, we <laughs> turned that... Or, because I think that when you take uh, on a responsibility sure, for an sure, organization, sure, sure. you have to make sure that you leave that organization behind in better shape than when yes. you found it. Yes, yes, exactly. Uh, and, uh, exactly. and so that's the type of track record that I established mm. in being Republican Party chairman in, in San Diego as well as in the mm. state. I was appointed by Governor Schwarzenegger to mm. the California Board of Forestry and Fire Protection. Uh -huh. uh, my neighborhood burned down in the Cedar Fire in 2003. I see. Uh, and uh, my house did not burn down, but my neighborhood was, was mm. largely uh, destroyed in the, in the fire. And so I served for a year on the mm. Board of Forestry and Fire Protection, dealing with emergency preparedness issues and issues related to, mm. uh, to um, uh, wildfire, which is, of course, an ongoing and constant threat here in California. And I also served as a school board member as for my local high school district in San Diego County, which has a $170 million mm -hmm. budget, 24,000 students. So I, I have a variety of experience, uh -huh. both in politics yes, and yes, in government. Yes, 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 and yes. I try to bring that experience to you know, whatever I'm do, doing going forward. Okay, very good. So back to my audience. Today joining me is the candidate for Lieutenant Governor of California, Mr. Ron Hearing. Uh, or Ron Hearing, I'm very sorry. Uh, uh, I'm trying to touch base with him, and you know, my audience know that I'm a low-key person. I'm not the kind of like, uh, at the peach of my voice, that kind of media person. Yeah, 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 who, who, who does nothing but finger pointing. I do not do that. I promote the, the positive energy, the positive part of life. Uh, by promoting people to positions as high as lieutenant governor, I really look at the fact that who you are, where you're from, what have you done. We just touched about the part of what have you done. It looks to me that uh, Mr. Nearing is the one who can make difference. Differences are made to be proven the, the guy for the position. Let's take a very short moment. When we come back, we'll find out what he has been doing for a living see if he has any experience of that area. So stay with us, we'll be right back.